Hey, good morning, everybody. So I have noticed in some of the comments, uh, wondering where we're located. So uh, the F4, the F100, and a few other of our jets are, uh, we're, we're based out of Texas. And our air show that uh, the ME262 will be flying in, and hopefully the F4, uh, is uh, wings over Houston. It's a pretty big air show and it's uh, fantastic. I mean, last year we had uh, the Snowbirds, the Thunderbirds, an F-22 demo, a C-17 demo, uh, all sorts of cool things. I think we even had Tora, 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 the old Warbird uh, experience. That was really neat to see. But uh, yes, uh, we're based out of Texas and uh, the air show we're pushing for is wings over Houston. All right, so now what I'm working on is one of our tugs and, well, no brakes on it. The uh, pedal is extremely spongy. The brakes are very ineffective, I should say. And we need to address that. So um, I can kind of bleed the brakes on this thing and go from there and uh, see what we got. So just want a little sample I pulled out of the uh, cylinder. I don't think that's the normal color for brake fluid. You know what would have made this thing a lot easier is that they buried the master cylinder for the brakes almost behind a fender. It's uh, kind of difficult to get to, but uh, we'll see if we can get done with it. Sometimes the simplest of solutions can escape you and four bolts hold on the fender panel so I have a lot easier access now to get to the brake setting on this thing so here's the master cylinder I had to suck out a lot of the sediment that it has collected in this over the years and that's what I got out of it. Just keep in mind, if you've never seen brake fluid before, it's supposed to be clear, not that color. All right, so I brought my power bleeder from home, so that'll help me out tremendously when it comes to bleeding the brakes on this thing, because uh, it's, uh, they suck. It's, yeah. All right, holding good pressure, so let's get to bleeding. Just before I started bleeding the brakes, I got asked to come uh, come assist, put a uh, panel on the back of the Phantom up on the uh, top of the aircraft, just forward of the tail. Uh, me and my son, and what you don't see on the screen is a uh, third ground crew uh, on the right-hand wing, helping catch and maneuver this panel into place. There's my air. There's my source of air. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. This one, I found the air, and that's why this thing didn't want to stop. It's a bad way to drive. Alright, 
so one thing I did not realize earlier was that the uh, the GoPro battery died while I was uh, bleeding the brakes so what I ended up finding was that right here on the master cylinder was this line right here that goes to the front brakes was actually plugged up with some sediment so I was able to take that off and go blow that clear and then I was able to bleed out both sets of brakes on the front and lo and behold this thing actually stops now whenever you push the brake pedal which is awesome it's so nice being able to stop whenever you want it to stop all right so we're back out of here at the me262 and we're gonna wrap up a few things on this because uh, she is the closest thing and she is for sure going to fly in our air show but we just got to put a few panels back on uh before we get into that i just want to cover something on the engines real quick so these are cj610s uh they're pretty much what you would find on a learjet now uh something i really want to show you guys i don't know how well this will show up But you can definitely tell the, there they are, the, uh, the intake on the fan blades for the compressor are really far back there. So in this, the engine essentially only takes up the back half of the pod and are far lighter than the original uh, Junkers Jumo 004s. And because of that, for this thing to fly correctly and to have the weight the right weight this giant steel counterweight had to be installed because you didn't have any engine up front so to make the pod sit normal because the engine's only in the back we had to have this installed here on screen is what the original Junkers Jumo 004s look like and as you can see they took up almost the entire length of the engine pod those engines also weighed nearly 1,600 pounds each, and the modern CJ610 is only a quarter of that. This is why the counterweights were installed so that the aircraft's center of gravity stays within limits. All right, so what we got going on here, Al? We're lubing up the main landing gear. The scissors portion. Okay, scissor links? Yeah. Nice. What all, uh... Let's see, other than panels, I'm pretty sure this is uh, pretty close to being done, huh? Oh, yeah, it's not. Well, finish this lube, put the panels on, and see, uh, repair that light, and put new batteries in the ELT, and she's done. Nice. So, 
Here's the nose panel. This is where the upper cannons uh, would fire out of here, but she's back on and looks like mm, probably due for an aircraft wash, but uh, we'll probably roll her out before the air show over to the wash pad and uh, take care of that. Uh, speaking of the cannons, something I didn't point out last time I was doing this was down here on each side of uh, just uh, right by the landing gear door. Uh, these ports are where the uh, the spent uh, casings would uh, be ejected from the cannons. So they would go overboard whenever uh, they were firing the cannons. What? It's not like you guys wouldn't do this too. Well, that's all for this weekend. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.